And that town you passed through, it's not called Shitsville. It's called Shits Creek. And it's where we live. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 behind the scenes secrets about Shits Creek. Which was a tough scene. It was a, I mean, I ended up rewriting that whole scene and basically having you regurgitate it at the last minute. <laughs> I have chosen to perform the title track off of my critically reviewed limited reality series, A Little Bit of Lexus. Who's, whose idea was it to have different wigs for every day? I have emails to prove that it was mine. <laughs> okay, was it really? For this list, we'll be looking looking at some interesting information we learned about this much-loved show. Did you know all these facts? Be sure to let us know in the comments. All right, let's check it out. Number 10. It's kind of based on a true story. Yes, I purchased the town. How else could I get the deed? I could have Photoshopped the and deed. And save the money. Like, why, save would the I, money. why would I Photoshop a deed? The joke was owning okay, the town. Stop. The premise of someone wealthy buying a small town on a whim seems outlandish, but in this case, truth was stranger than fiction and Dan Levy was inspired. In 1989, Kim Basinger actually purchased most of the land in Brazelton, Georgia. She had a vision of making it a magnet for tourists, but after a few years, it was clear this plan would not come to fruition. You did this? No, I didn't do this. I tried to fix this. Well, it, it is what it is. Okay, it looks like- I know what it looks like, Alexis. I know. When Dan Levy saw an article about it, he used it as a jumping off point but aimed to add comedy to that sort of situation. If heaven had a creek, it would be this one. Number nine, Annie Murphy said David as much as possible. I was saving that for after my run, David. Oh my God, I guess I was saving it for during your run then. Oh, you're like a big dirty raccoon, David. It would be all too easy to peg Alexis Rose as just a bratty, almost reality TV famous socialite, but thanks to Annie Murphy's nuanced portrayal, she's way more than that. Though Alexis does become very different from the person we met in the pilot, one constant was always how she said her brother's name. I'm sorry for not responding to like one text, David. Murphy said that she discovered the perfect inflection and then proceeded to use it as much as possible. And then I just ran with it. I just <laughs> drove it into the ground. Um, yeah, I would speckle many, many sentences with many Davids. So thank you for letting me do that. Somehow, Alexis simply saying, David, usually in a whiny voice or in disgust paired with the word ew, has become one of the show's most iconic lines, repeated over and over again throughout the series. David! I know David. I will, but what's gone so wrong David. between the two of you? Number eight, Emily Hampshire always wanted to play Sally Bowles. Emily Hampshire, the actress who portrays Stevie, said that for years, her dream was to have the opportunity to play Sally Bowles in the musical Cabaret. Me in front of people, I am not an actor. And neither is the lead in the play. She's simply a headstrong young woman who's been knocked about a few times and looking to make the most of herself. This was something she had mentioned to Dan Levy while they were working on the first season, requesting that if ever they did a musical on the show, for it to be that one. Money, 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 she didn't think this fantasy would come to fruition, let alone that her character would actually be cast in her dream role. It really is like dream come true on a next level because it's not only do I get to play this part, but as Stevie, yeah. makes it so much better because I can't fail as harshly. It's obvious from her performance in the season five finale that she's putting her entire heart and soul into it. Maybe Number seven, the wigs were Catherine O'Hara's idea. Who's, whose idea was it to have different wigs for every day? I have emails to prove that it was mine. <laughs> okay. Though every member of the Rose family is extra in their own way, Moira, the family's matriarch, has been the most over the top. Did you put Kristen with Robin? They don't like each other. No, no. One of the characteristics that shows just how outlandish she is, is her tendency to wear a new wig nearly every time we see her making her actual appearance somewhat of a mystery. Are those wigs real hair? I just want to reach out and Please touch Please don't. Them. No, Maureen does not like to be manhandled. It turns out that it was actress Catherine O'Hara's idea to have her character be obsessed with wigs. 
And O'Hara named them after women she knew. My babies. No, your kids aren't here. My girls. What girls? My girls. Oh. Lorna, sack her from the left. Okay. If she takes on smoke, she'll never recover. Hey, this, oh. this one. And, and Cindy. Cindy below her. And Cindy, I just gave her a blowout. We are sure the costume department loved the creative license they could take, because there was no wig too dramatic for Moira. You better remember which nails you pulled those wigs from because your mother keeps a spreadsheet. Number six, Patrick and David's first kiss was originally different. Which was a tough scene. It was a, I mean, I ended up rewriting that whole scene and basically having you regurgitate it at the last <laughs> minute. In a show that can be quite silly, Patrick and David's relationship has always been a poignant counterweight that grounds the show in something sweet and tender. And I'm so glad you did, Patrick, because you really helped to turn it into the success that it is. Mmm. A bold claim. The couple's first kiss was always going to be a major moment, but it turns out the scene was rewritten just the night before filming. Thank you. For what? Um, I've never done that before with a guy. Okay. Yeah. Initially, Patrick was supposed to be the one to make the first move. But after talking to a friend, Dan Levy considered their journeys of coming out and ultimately decided to switch things around so that it was David who leaned in first. I was getting a little scared that I was going to let you leave here without us having done that. So, um, thank you for, um, making that happen for us. Number five, Moira's accent was a surprise. Excuse me, but the enchiladas were my mother's recipe. Moira's accent is hard to pin down. It's clearly something the character puts on because no one in her family speaks in quite the same way. Why, why, are you, why were you not at lunch? David, stop acting like a disgruntled pelican. When Catherine O'Hara was attempting to explain to Dan and Eugene Levy, she said, quote, I don't want to sound like a human. In the moment, it just makes sense. <laughs> what does that sound like? As it turns out, vaguely British with a tad of old Hollywood Catherine Hepburn folded in. And a vociferous vocabulary to render us pendant onto her every idiom. I am booked up, David. You should see my schedule. I'm positively bedeviled with meetings, etc. It wasn't until Catherine O'Hara's first scene that anyone heard what she had come up with. Additionally, the very distinct way she pronounces the word bebe was something Catherine said jokingly while filming. But it proved such a hit with the crew, she decided to go with it. Where is Bebe's chamber? Oh, there she is now. She's either up or taking a leak. Either way, great progress for Bebe. Number four, Annie Murphy co-wrote A Little Bit of Lexus. You know what they say, if you want a theme song for a reality series to be so bad it's so good, write it yourself. I have chosen to perform the title track off of my critically reviewed limited reality series, A Little Bit of Lexus. Ooh. Feel free to sing along if you know the words. Okay. Though the reviewer acknowledged A Little Bit of Lexus was an early component of Alexis's character, it wasn't until the show's fifth season that we got to hear the banger of a theme song. A Little Bit of Lexus was one of the first character details I jot, jotted down when we were brainstorming the character of Alexis That's right. in my dad's living room That's right. seven years ago. With the help of her husband, Menno Versteeg, and Nixon Boyd, both of whom are in the band Colorado, Murphy set to work, using Britney Spears, Paris Hilton, and Lindsay Lohan as inspiration, but adapting it for Alexis's lack of musical talent and abundance of confidence, the title track was born. I'm a little bit tipsy when I drive my car. I'm expensive sushi. I'm a cute, huge yacht. I'm a little bit single, even when I'm not. The end result has become one of the most beloved and catchiest scenes from the show. I'm a little bit of la 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 la. A little bit of Lexus. La 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 la. Oh, a little wow. bit of Lexus. Okay. Yes. La la la. Wonderful. Number three, Eugene Levy didn't like Annie Murphy as Alexis. Do you know my middle name? If I said Anna. I can't believe this. Even though it's nearly impossible to imagine anyone other than Annie Murphy playing Alexis Rose, it wasn't the most simple path to get there. Do I have to remind you of the time that I was taken hostage on David Geffen's yacht by Somali pirates for a week and nobody answered my texts? The actress had also auditioned to play Stevie, and when she was ultimately considered for Alexis, Eugene Levy opposed the decision. Hi, my name is Angie Murphy. Annie came in and she wasn't really made up and she had a bun in her hair and she walked in with this sort of casual nonchalance. Wow. And I called my dad after the audition and I said, I think we have something here. 
The primary reason why he didn't think she was a good fit was the fact that she was a brunette, and the character of Alexis had been conceived as a blonde. Dan Levy went as far as to tape photos of blonde hair onto photos of Annie in order to show his dad what the final effect would be. Luckily, Eugene came around and the rest is history. Number 2. Noah Reed composed his version of The Best. Give me a lifetime of promises and a world of dream. Speak the language of love like you know what it means. One of the show's most emotionally charged moments comes when Patrick serenades David with a unique version of the song The Best. His interpretation is quite a variation on the original, and it turns out actor Noah Reed was the one to arrange the cover. And then in the middle of the night I got this text message and it was him singing it at home uh, and was like, tell me what you think, and I put it on and was like, <laughs> Another interesting fact about that scene is that Moira's tears while watching his performance were genuine. Catherine O'Hara said that if you're doing a live performance, you should shoot the audience first because they'll see it for the first time and there will be that sort of authentic reaction. Catherine O'Hara shed real tears while bearing witness to this moment of love, and Dan Levy opted to keep the candid moment in the final cut of the episode. You're simply the best, better than all the rest. Don't these behind the scenes facts make you love the show more as if that were possible? Anyway, we've got even more shitty yet honorable mentions before we get to our top behind the scenes secret about Schitt's Creek. And trust me, you're gonna love this one. It started a tourism trend. Goodwood, Ontario, where the show is filmed, has become a mecca for fans. And I was strolling around the streets of Goodwood and this car of ladies pulls up to me and they're like, Alexis? The designer clothes from the wardrobe department are secondhand. The costume designers had to work with a limited budget, but made it work. I knew if we, if we were gonna base this in reality, the clothes needed to be real designer clothes, they had to be expensive, and they had to look like a million dollars, because that's all the family has of their clothes when they move to this town. Casting Catherine O'Hara was Eugene Levy's idea. There was no way Dan could say no to that. You can do this, Moira. You're radiant. You're beguiling. You are daytime television's brightest star. Dan Levy wrote the finale in half a day. He already knew where every character was supposed to end up. It's not been an easy road for me, but knowing that you will always be there for me at the end of it makes everything okay. Patrick Brewer, you are my happy ending. The title was Eugene Levy's idea. The show just wouldn't be the same without it. And that town you passed through, it's not called Shitsville. It's called Shits Creek. And it's where we live. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, it may not be the end. You take care of the place, Stevie. And uh, if you get the chance, room seven needs a turn down. It may be hard for fans to accept that Shit's Creek is really over because of how real the characters had become. Luckily, creator Dan Levy hasn't completely closed the door on revisiting the Rose family story. Though he feels as though their character arcs have come to their natural conclusion, Levy said, quote, if there is something that comes up down the line that feels compelling enough to bring our troop back together and continue to tell a story, so be it. Oh, and David. Feeling like that. Yes, Mariah Carey. You will always be a part of me. I'm part of you indefinitely. So while we shouldn't get our hopes up, fans can be a little optimistic that we might spend time with the Roses and the residents of Schitt's Creek again. I just don't think I'm finished with this place. I don't know about you, but I definitely need more Schitt's Creek in my life considering everything that's going on this year. Holiday special part two, anyone? Yeah. Be sure to come to the comments to tell us if we missed anything or if you learned anything new. Or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton or on my YouTube channel. See you next time.